Hey guys, what's going on? Brella London here. You guys know what to do is always like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you for helping me get to 3k. Uh, it's a massive achievement. I wanted to hit it by the time that the football came back and we've hit 3k already. So, you know, let's just keep going. We're, here, we're doing really good at the moment, but uh, let's get into today's video. So I've just finished watching the RB Leipzig versus uh, Paderborn, I think it was playing. They were playing a game, and as you can see here, uh, it was 1-0 in the top right. It says RB Leipzig 1-0 uh, uh, against Paderborn, but the game ended one all, and Timo Werner did miss a couple of chances, but I'm not worried about it. Like, Twitter's going a bit mental. People saying like, you know, oh, this is the guy we're signing, eh? But anyone who actually knows what Timo Werner is about uh, will have no problems with that. Uh, they went down to 10 men basically and Timo Werner was just stuck up front all on his own. So as you can see, RB Leipzig chief denies Chelsea agreement for Timo Werner and people are losing their minds about this. Uh, RB Leipzig CEO Oliver Minchlaff has denied widespread reports that Chelsea have agreed to sign Timo Werner this summer. Reports this week suggested that the Blues are triggered as 53.8 million release clause. By the way, I've also heard that it's about 49 million pounds. So it's somewhere between 54 million and 49 million, somewhere about there. And has agreed a five-year deal with 200,000 pounds a week with a 24-year-old. So that's what the videos that I've done previously are about. Team of Owner is going to, like, don't panic, guys. He is still going to be a Chelsea player. Uh, however, prior to this afternoon's match between Leipzig and Paderborn, Mintz left denied that there has been an official approach from Frank Lampard's side. He was quoted saying, we haven't had an, an exchange with Chelsea yet, he told reporters. So far, Team Aruna has not drawn the clause, nor has a club sent a transfer contract. So people are going mental. And basically, this situation is, he's not lying. Chelsea have not like made any exchange. He said, we haven't had any exchange. That is true. We have not been in contact with the club. He said, so far, Team Aruna has not drawn the clause, nor has any club sent a transfer contract, which is true. If you read the reports that are coming out, it's that we've met with Timo Werner. We've met with him, his agent, his family. Um, Man, Man City have been involved, like I'll get to in a bit. Liverpool have been involved. Uh, I think Man United were involved, but he didn't want to go to uh, City. He didn't want to go to Man United. Liverpool, we know that he wanted, but he would have to wait another year to go there. Klopp has basically been told, you can't have him this year. You'd have to wait a year. So we are signing Timo Werner. Um, we have made an agreement with Timo Werner himself to make the deal happen obviously we don't have to worry about oh are Leipzig gonna you know agree to the deal or not no we have we've basically told uh, Timo Werner and his representatives that we will meet the transfer clause in full which means you know no installments no nothing we'll pay the exact whether it's 53.8 million as this report claims or 49 million whatever it is we'll pay that in full in cash and uh and then the the issue was then okay so he's got a release clause they have to accept it if we pay the money which we will um we need to convince timo Werner to come to us and that's why frank lampard has been on the phone with him that's why frank and pear check went out in february to um have a chat with timo Werner, and we've convinced him so he is going to be joining us people are going mental saying oh their ceo said it's not happening it's not happening because their club has not spoke to chelsea yet and they can't say no we're not doing this deal because it's in the contract they have to accept so we don't have to get in contact with them until uh, we are ready to make the deal officially happen. Uh, a lot of reports coming out saying that we were going to be announcing or like having the deal complete early next week. So I'm thinking Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, um, we will be hearing some more details about, okay, Chelsea have officially put their bid in, Leipzig have accepted. We've gone through the contract with Timo Werner, so we'll just be putting all that to you know be signed. We've agreed on all the details, the wage, the bonuses, all that sort of stuff. So it's just a case of us putting the contract in front of him. He's going to check over and say, yep, okay, everything we said is in there. Sign the dotted line and Timo Werner will be a Chelsea player at least next season. So do not panic, guys, about this. This article is true. Like, everyone's going to be clickbaiting it to hell because, you know, the worry of like, oh my God, Timo Werner isn't joining Chelsea? What the hell? But he is joining Chelsea. We just haven't approached their club yet. That is the situation, which is normal. So do not panic. And I mentioned something about Man City being involved, and it says, update, Timo Werner. Man City was also at the negotiating table, but Chelsea got the yes from Timo Werner. Frank Lampard convinced the striker that Werner would be uh, become an important player in his team. So that shows a lot, you know, that Chelsea have got the pulling power through Frank Lampard to be able to see Man City going in for him. And he says, nah, no thanks, Man City. Liverpool, I'd have to wait a year. Nah, not up for it. Man United, yeah, jog on. And Chelsea are the ones that he's like, you know what? Yeah, I believe in the project. I believe we apparently there's a very 
definitive and structured three-year plan going on at Chelsea to get back on top and be, you know, Premier League champions. And I buy into it. I think the next three years, we are definitely going to be right up there again. So I don't think that Man City ever really had a chance. You know, he'd be competing with Aguero, who is getting older. Um, Gabriel Jesus, who is probably the future striker for Manchester City. And I think he just sees here that, you know, like he he thinks he can nail on either that left wing role or that striker or whatever we've told him that we're going to play him at. And I'm very excited for this. So then on to the next article. Chelsea set to sell seven players following Timo Werner signing. And this, if you, if you buy into like the, a lot of people think that, you know, there's a lot of players at our club that we don't need to get rid of that we should maybe try keeping William, we should maybe try keeping like Pedro maybe, we should maybe keep a hold of Ross Barkley. I personally think the players I want to see go are Bakayoko, Drinkwater, Ross Barkley, William, Pedro, um, I'm probably missing a couple in the, oh, Emerson or Alonso, I'd probably say Emerson to leave. Um, I think that's it. But if we scroll into this article, seven players are likely to be leaving and down here you can see Pedro, William, Jorginho, is likely to leave. Marcus Lonzo, Kurt Zuma, Ross Barkley, and Mishi Batshuayi will all leave Chelsea in the summer. So let's go through that. You know, Pedro and William, I think we knew that. The wingers, they're getting old. We're looking to get rid of them. Let's address Marcus Lonzo next. We knew we we're going to be getting rid of one of our left backs. Um, I'm surprised it's Marcus Lonzo because my just my thoughts are Emerson, you know, if we're signing Ben Chill or Tagliafico, they are the more defensive left backs. And it'd be good to have Marcus Alonso to be able, you know, if we do have to switch to a more offensive system, Marcus Alonso is great for a goal. We've seen that towards the end of the season as we've currently played. So I'm a bit surprised to see that Marcus Alonso is going, especially given that Juventus are very, very keen on getting Emerson. Kurt Zuma, we've seen reports of this. It could be two Spurs. That is one of the um, teams that are after him, supposedly. And I'm not too surprised by it. I do wonder who we're going to bring in, though, because we've got, you know, a team, uh, Timo, uh, Fikayo Tomori, uh, Christensen, Ethan Ampadu is certainly coming back, uh, and Rudiger. So, you know, are we just going to be sticking with those four? Are we looking to sign someone that's up there? Of course, um, Upamecano was a target of Chelsea's, um, as we've seen in previous games. But in the RB likes of ga game that has just happened, that I've just finished watching, he got uh, two yellow cards resulting in a red card and pretty in general had a pretty bad game so i'm sure a lot of chelsea fans are watching that game and i've seen all over twitter their minds have changed they do not want a pamacano now people aren't too fussed on cooler you now so who is you know the elite center back that we're going to buy in i'm not too sure we know a lot about gabriel magalhaes so we've talked about him before it's possible but i think we could do a job with tamori christensen ampadu and uh, rudiger it's not bad but it's not you know compared to how our attack is going to look it's not that level and then you got Ross Barkley. I'm happy to see him leave. A lot of people want us to keep Ross, but I personally just think, yeah, yeah he's a good squad player. But if you look at, at, you know, as it stands, we would have Jorginho, Kovacic, Kante, Billy Gilmore. Four players to go across, you know, two centre mid positions. I don't think we need Ross Barkley realistically, but if he's happy to stay and just collect a small wage, I say small wage, like he isn't on stupid numbers compared to normal people, but collect, you know, a lesser wage and that's maybe not the worst thing in the world. Mishu Bachwai, we knew, uh, I'm pretty sure everyone knew, was going to be going because he had an awful season. Uh, he had chances to get in ahead of time. He had chances to prove himself off the bench. He had chances to start and he never really uh, did very well. He did score against, I think it was Man United, he scored that really nice goal where he just ran through, shot from distance, lovely goal, but was never really able to replicate it. So, not surprised me she's going. Jorginho is an interesting one on the list. Apparently, you know, if he's going to be leaving Stamford Bridge, according to this article, that is quite big news. Um, I don't think I want Jorginho to leave, but it depends who we're bringing in. You know, if we're getting rid of Jorginho, um, Kurt Zuma, you know, these are players that will go for a little bit more. Marcus Alonso will probably fetch a decent fee. Barkley, not so much. And Batshuayi, maybe not, given his recent form. This is all money because Chelsea are still interested in signing Kai Havertz and Jadon Sancho, not both one of the two. So, you know, all this money adds up. And if that makes it easiest for, to sign uh, Jadon Sancho or something, then that is fine by me. Because none of these players, I'd say, are, you know, guaranteed players that we need. Uh, Jorginho is one that I think has you know changed games for us, so it might be a dodgy one to lose him. Kurt Zuma is the same. I think he has got that physical dominating centre-back thing, it, like sort of need that uh, Chelsea need but there's also times where he's a bit silly and makes mistakes so 
If we sell Jorginho and Kurzum, I would expect to see maybe another centre back and a centre mid brought in. Maybe, maybe a centre mid. But I mean, if we're playing maybe like Hakim Ziyech at centre mid, then that does make room for Sancho to go there. So there's options. I'm glad that we're still looking at Sancho and with all these players leaving, maybe that opens up a lot of wage bill and some transfer money, you know, for selling them all. And then just a quick little update on the Pedro situation that we talked about uh, in yesterday's video, and that is that Pedro is uh, very close to accepting offer to leave, doesn't see himself completing the season which is very odd. Um, we all know I think Pedro is going to be heading to uh, Roma. Uh, he is looking for a minimum of two years. I think he'll probably get that with maybe an extension to uh, three years. So I think that'll happen. But then it says here, perhaps even more interesting, it's suggested that he is not all that keen on finishing the season with Chelsea. Pedro's contract expires on June 30th. And the Premier League matches are expected to go on beyond that date. Diaz says Pedro doesn't see clearly the option of playing beyond June 30th for Chelsea. So um, it's a bit weird because everyone's sort of been under the impression that if your contract's running out during, you know, this pandemic that has had the season delayed, that, you, you know, you, you'll go on a month to month contract until the season officially ends and then you'll move on to your next club. But maybe Pedro is going to try and push for it to not happen and that he will join on June 30th. Um, which will be one quite disrespectful to Chelsea. Um, I'd be a bit disappointed in him for doing that. I wouldn't have thought he'd do that because he seems like a very stand-up man, very professional. So I'd be surprised if that happens. And two, like, is that even possible? Like, I thought all the clubs were in agreement that they weren't going to, you know, that th these players would just get their contracts extended until the end of uh, the season in you know their respective leagues so a bit of a weird one that um, I hope it's not true because that's very disrespectful from Pedro and then something just a little bit crazy that I wanted to uh, mention at the end of the video Liverpool offered much higher wage to Timo Werner than Chelsea and were willing to pay the fee so apparently Liverpool had uh, offered to activate Timo Werner's release clause in principle after agreeing a contract with the player Liverpool's uh, contract offer to Timo was 50,000 a week uh, more than the one he has agreed with Chelsea um, according to this transfer expert Werner has agreed that a five-year deal with Chelsea, um, which is about £45 million, um, the 24-year-old's contract is set to be the highest played player at Stamford Bridge on a report 190k a week. So we've heard 190, we've heard 200k, somewhere about there. Um, but yeah, this guy, uh, McGarry, admits that Liverpool were yet to agree a fee, but had offered Werner a much higher wage as well, making an offer in principle to activate his release clause. Uh, I brought you this news on this week's podcast on Wednesday that Liverpool were very much in the driving seat and had yet to offer or indeed agree with RB Leipzig for the 24-year-old. 20 Since then, Chelsea have taken advantage of their inertia in moving to secure the player, despite having worked hard and Jürgen Klopp in particular working very hard to convince him, like we all know that he was on the phone to him, and offered the player about £50,000 a week more than the current offer he has from Chelsea, as well as an offer to meet in principle RB Leipzig's rescission clause for the player, which stands at 60 million euros. This is a classic example of a blindside move in the transfer market. So apparently, we, you know, there was a deal on the table for him to go to Liverpool, and we have just completely come in and hijacked it and said, look, we'll pay now, we'll give you this contract, we'll give you this, we'll give you that, we'll make sure you're an important player. And apparently he's just accepted that. But he says that it is expected that Liverpool will go back in for Werner in a late attempt to steal him from under the nose of Chelsea. So we do have to be cautious about this, guys. It's possible that we see Liverpool come back in for it, but they have until early uh, next week to get it done, basically, because I think we're waiting on him to have a medical and then it's pretty much officially signed. So I don't think Liverpool will be able to get in. If they do, it's going to be a bit of a crazy few days. Um, but I don't think they will. I'm pretty confident we've got a guy. I'm like 90, 95% sure that we've got him. But that's the end of the video, guys. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any questions or anything like that that you want to ask me, make sure you leave them down in the comment section down below. And I might answer them in tomorrow's video. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.